This is Business Week Armenia, CivilNet's weekly business digest. Here are this week's top stories. Armenia's largest mining enterprise has said it cut all ties with the prominent Russian oligarch Roman Tratsenka late last month, just days before the United States imposed sanctions on his holding company. However, the Zangazur Copper Molybdenum Combine's biggest shareholder is now listed as a Russian citizen with known business links to Tratsenka. In a press release this week, the Zangazur Combine said since October 27th there has been no relationship between Mr. Tratsenko and the company, and insisted neither the company nor its shareholders or ultimate beneficial owners are included in any sanctions lists and no international sanctions are applicable to the company. Less than a week after that date, the US government announced it would be imposing sanctions on the Eon Corporation, Tratsenko's holding company, and a network of nearly two dozen associated entities. In a joint statement, the state and treasury departments described Tritsenko and his relatives as a wealthy family believed to be close to Russian President Vladimir Putin, additionally alleging involvement in Russia's invasion of Ukraine last year and other malign activities. Two years ago, Tritsenko became the Zangazur Combine's largest shareholder, purchasing the majority of shares and then immediately ceding a sizable stake to the Armenian government without explanation. Armenian officials have repeatedly refused to comment on the matter. As of this month, however, Tritsenko is no longer listed as having any shares in the company on Armenia's state registry of legal entities. Instead, the biggest shareholder is now listed as Svetlana Yershova, a Russian citizen with known business links to Tritsenka. The Zangazur Combine is Armenia's biggest mine and one of the world's top molybdenum producers. The enterprise paid about $132 million in taxes to the Armenian government in the first three quarters of the year, making it the country's single biggest taxpayer. Armenia enjoys considerable deposits of copper, gold, and molybdenum, and the mining industry is one of the country's biggest sources of employment and government revenue. Armenia's gross domestic product grew by 9.2% in the first three quarters of the year, well above the government's 7% economic growth target. That's according to Economy Minister Vahan Karobyan, who announced the updated figures this week. Despite big challenges, we are exceeding the targets set for 2023, Karobyan said, listing labor shortages, underdeveloped infrastructure, and the ever-present threat of renewed conflict with Azerbaijan as the most pressing issues constraining Armenia's development. Armenia's economy continues to expand substantially after an eye-popping 12.6% growth in GDP last year, largely on the back of massive inflows of capital and labor from Russia and soaring trade between the two countries. Figures out last month from Armenia's statistical committee showed double-digit growth in construction services and trade in the first nine months of the year, even while agriculture remained largely stagnant and industrial output dropped slightly. Inflation has also decreased noticeably in recent months, with year-on-year -year inflation ending last month at just 0.1%. Amid decelerating inflation, Armenia's central bank has lowered interest rates four times since June, most recently cutting rates by 25 basis points to 9.5% last month. The Armenian government this week formally ordered one of the country's richest oligarchs to provide legal justification for his acquisition of hundreds of millions of dollars worth of assets as part of a years-long corruption probe. In a statement, the prosecutor general's office demanded Gagik Tsarukyan explain how he acquired 79 properties, 42 vehicles, an unnamed number of shares in 39 companies, and about $214 million in cash. The total value of those assets was not made available. Tsarukyan did not immediately comment. Tsarukyan, who is widely known in Armenia by the nickname Dodi Gago, amassed a fortune during the privatization of formerly state-owned assets in Armenia after the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990s. He has long faced allegations of corruption even as his holding company, Multigroup Concern, emerged as one of the country's most powerful and influential firms. Tsarukyan was one of the few oligarchs in Armenia who supported the 2018 revolution led by Pashinyan, but it is understood the two men fell out in 2020. Later that year, the Armenian government opened an investigation into Tsarukyan's finances which remains ongoing. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.